Hi folks, a few of you have asked for some videos, so I figured let's try some videos and see how we get on. Okay, so I'm going to start today uh, just by talking about interference of waves. I'm going to do it really, really quickly. And really this is just to set the scene for some of the stuff later on that we're going to be doing. We've been talking about waves for quite a long time now, probably since like third year or maybe even second year when we were doing some of the stuff in the electromagnetic spectrum. So if you see something like this, like it should be like fairly okay for you uh, to state things like the wavelength, which you could mark in from there to there, uh, things like the amplitude, um, what else could we say? This would be a trough, that would be crest, and so on and so on. Okay, so you should be okay with that and you should be okay with the definitions of each of those things. We've studied waves before, looking at things like reflection and refraction and so on and so on, but we've never actually looked at interference before. So that's what we're going to do really quickly just now. Um, interference is something which is noticed when waves come into contact with each other. So what I've got here is I've got two sets of waves. And one of the things that's really important about this diagram is that we notice that um, the crest from this wave is actually meeting the crest from that wave. The troughs are meeting there and that pattern continues. So the crests meet crests and troughs meet troughs. Now a really interesting thing happens at that point. The amplitudes of both these waves would combine to give you something that looked a little bit like this. Okay, so excuse my rubbish drawing, okay, but if we have a little look, um, using this graph paper here, you can see that this is the amplitude of each wave. Um, what you'll also notice is when the waves combine, the amplitude has become the sum of these two individual amplitudes. And this is called constructive interference. And it occurs when crests meet crests and troughs meet troughs, as we see there. We say that these waves are in phase with each other. If they're traveling so that crests always meet crests and troughs always meet troughs, these waves are in phase. And when waves meet in phase, they produce this construct of interference. Now it's also possible for waves to be out of phase. And what that means is the opposite happens when they meet. Instead of crests meeting crests, what you end up with is you end up with what you've got here, where crests are meeting troughs. This results in waves being out of phase. And what's happening here is just the same, the amplitude at each point's adding together. But here, what they're effectively doing is they're cancelling each other out. So you would end up with no wave pattern whatsoever. This is what we call destructive interference. And this is what happens when the waves are out of phase. Last thing I should have added about that is note that the frequency doesn't change. It's only the amplitude of the wave that changes. Oh, and the other thing that I need to say is this, that interference is evidence for the wave model of light. All the other things that we've looked at in terms of waves over the years, uh, reflection, refraction, diffraction, all of those can be demonstrated with particles, but interference is evidence for the wave model of light that says that light is a wave. Okay, I'm going to link a video down below, I'll put it down in the, the description, and um, what it shows a video of water waves, interference in water waves. Uh, go check it out, it's really, really good. Okay, so there we go, that's the first video on interference. I hope you found that useful, and um, I'll see you in the next one.